sure you check out our online store where we work with our graphic designer to create stunning garment and product designs that feature a wide variety of aircraft types such as British fighters, World War II aircraft, American bombers, Russian fighters and much more. You can pick your favourite designs and personalise any items within our Redbubble store that range from clothing right the way through to stationery. All of our designs feature our logo so you can show your support for the channel while getting a quality product. You can head to our website aircrewinterview.tv and click store or go to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash AC interview. Thank you and enjoy. We're going to talk about the suit because that look, that thing looks really uncomfortable. Can you talk <laughs> us through it? Is it actually uncomfortable? You know, it's it's actually not uh, really? surprisingly. No, it's kind of just like wearing a big sleeping bag, you know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> but so the the suits in, themselves are are absolutely phenomenal. Um, they are actual space suits. You could. Uh, you know, survive in uh, a vacuum environment, you know, like uh, outer space. They are the same suits wow, that okay. the shuttle astronauts used to use back in the early 80s. Um, and, you know, even through the, the program, the, they were a little bit of a different color and they had a little bit of different uh, equipment on the suits where the shuttle astronauts did. But the fundamentals of the suit are still uh, the same. And mm -hmm. originally, the shuttle astronauts, um, the shuttle program borrowed our suits from us on the SR-71 program when they started flying before they had their own, as I understand it. Mm -hmm. So uh, those suits um, are actually made by David Clark, the same uh, manufacturer of the headsets, the green headsets, the you know no aviation way. headsets. But um, yeah, so uh, they're made in Worcester, Massachusetts, and um, they are they're absolutely phenomenal. We have some of the most you know well trained and and uh, and greatest uh, suit technicians that work with the U two program um, because really there's nowhere else in the world that is utilizing space suits like the ones we have, um, you know, especially with the frequency at, at which we use them. So. We really are kind of the center of of you know the latest as far as you know space suit technology goes. I'm sure once you know, SpaceX and some of these other companies yeah. come out with some of their stuff, uh, you know, then David Clark's going to have some competition. But uh, mm -hmm. as far as you know, uh, as far as what we are concerned about, um, uh, they're they're phenomenal. So the suit itself is um, it's it's quite comfortable. It's actually several layers of material there's a you know comfort layer which is nice and soft there mm -hmm. is a rubber layer which provides the uh the 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 air tightness um it's kind of like wearing a big onesie you know <laughs> uh and then there is a every suit is custom fit uh to the pilot um there's a, a braided uh type of of um it's almost oh, it's hard to describe, but it's like a, a, a braided sleeve that you put on and it's contoured to your body. Oh, nice. So every suit is individual, uh, individualized to the pilot. So it's not like um, a small, medium, large. You just not it's doing. not really like a small, medium, large kind of right. thing. No, okay. your suit is your suit. Every pilot gets uh, two of them. And when all is said and done, you know, a setup costs about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or so for the for the suit itself. Um, there is elements to keep you cool. Uh, there's cooling that is, is plumbed throughout the suit. There's ventilation air, uh, that is incorporated into the suit. So you have a constant inflow and a constant outflow and you can adjust those. Um, and then there is the, the helmet, of course, um, the helmet is probably the most complicated part of the, uh, of the whole, uh, ensemble. Uh, you of course have the face plate. Um, and the faceplate is is kind of interesting. You have 24 karat gold uh, wire that is uh, run throughout the faceplate itself, which is connected to a heater or not here. It, it itself gets hot and that plugs into the jet and that actually uh, provides defog. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so that way, you, you know, it's, it's not going to fog up on you. Mm -hmm. Uh, all of your communications are linked into the helmet and you have a spray bar around your face. Uh, which provides 100% oxygen to uh, the areas just surrounding your face. The rest of the suit is all 
bleed air that is plumbed from the uh, the aircraft engine um, and bleed air system, the oxygen that you're breathing around your just in your face cavity there um, is uh, liquid oxygen that we carry on board the airplane with us. So. Uh, there's regulators and there's all different, you know, little mechanisms inside the helmet just to make sure that everything uh, functions properly. There's backup uh, regulators just in case one of them malfunctions. And uh, uh, there's also probably the most important, well, next to the, the, the air is the feeding port. I was just about uh, to ask you about that, yeah. <laughs> How's that so work? there's there's a little there's a little one way valve on the uh, on the helmet itself, and that is where um, uh, that's where we eat and drink from. In order to eat, um, it's the same uh, the same company that makes MREs, from what I understand, uh, makes what we call tube food, mm -hmm. and it's actually really delicious. There's probably thirty different types of of food, and it's just it's ground up mush like Gerber like baby, baby. food almost. You know? <laughs> It's the same kind of thing, but we have, yeah. you know, cheesy polenta and bacon and we have oh, chicken wow. a la king and, and desserts, key lime pie, you know, uh, and caffeinated chocolate pudding. That's really the best stuff. Uh, oh, wow. You get that that jolt of, of caffeine. But we use uh, it looks like a tube of toothpaste, really. And there's a long straw on the end of the on the end of the tube. And that straw goes into the feeding port and. On any given mission, you bring up five or six of those, and and there's your meal right there. Bring a couple snacks, and and uh, yeah, that's how you eat. Wow, that's awesome. Now, this might be a daft question, but have you, like when you started flying with a helmet, did you ever have, have a niche and be like scratch your helmet or something like that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the worst part about it is mm. that um, you know once. In order to really avoid any kind of uh, issues with decompression sickness or, or getting bent, you pre-breathe 100% oxygen, uh, you know, for an hour prior to taking off in order to purge as much nitrogen from your blood as possible. And you, from, from that point, you really never want to open up, um, you know, the helmet and breathe ambient air because then you're going to be taking in more of that nitrogen that you tried to purge from your system. So to your point, you can't just open up and scratch your face mm -hmm. and, and, and whatnot because you don't want to be breathing the air. And also, if there were a rapid decompression of the cockpit in that moment, uh, you would not have the protection that the suit would you know, afford. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but we don't fly around with the suit pressurized. Uh, okay. The suit is depressurized because when it's pressurized, it's very rigid and it's very difficult to move in and it's... It will inflate in a way that allows you to manipulate the flight controls, but really it's a backup system to a rapid decompression at altitude. Mm -hmm. um, above about 63,000 feet, which is called Armstrong's line, mm -hmm. uh, at that point at body temperatures, at pressures that low, your bodily fluids would literally boil out of your body. So as soon as cabin pressure would reach about 35,000 feet ambient, uh, the suit would begin to inflate, provide pressure, you know, to the body and, and keep you alive uh, in order for you to be able to descend down to a survivable altitude and then, you know, figure out what you were going to do from there.